Hey again guys and welcome back. Today I want to take a look at these guys. These specifically are LEDs that you plug in directly into your wall. You don't need that little ballast box and you don't need any additional circuitry. I'm assuming you need um, some cooling because this is a thin substrate. But over here, if I remember what uh, Big Clive was saying, is these are chips that what they do is they ride the AC sine wave and change their resistance value depending on the temperature they achieve. That's why they're on the same heat sink. And this here, this little guy, I believe is a full bridge rectifier. The only thing I don't see is any capacitive smoothing now, taking a closer look myself, and I don't know, these could be little caps, but if so, they are absolutely tiny. Because again, standing this thing end on is tiny. So this one specifically looks a little bit different because it's a orangey hue, and that's because it is a grow LED. So it is actually meant to grow plants. Unfortunately, um, no Chinese company has offered to send me a color spectrum analyzer. So I couldn't tell you if this specific one is good for growing plants, but what I can do is I can set up a little plant growing station because we've already seeded some strawberries and I think it was just strawberries actually. And so we can get this and track the growth of my strawberries over the winter. So nothing else to do Let's get this thing set up for testing. In a fortunate turn of events for you guys, somehow I ordered four of these. What was I thinking? But that means that we can now use this and attempt to uh, check thermals and see what would happen with this thing without a heat sink. So let's start by soldering some wires onto these two connections. Here is the bin where I, where I keep my assorted lengths of wire. So we're going to go for something maybe not in the silicone variety, although I doubt this PVC insulation is rated for AC. The silicone stuff probably isn't really either. gauge is this anyway? 18 gauge? Ah, uh, you know what. I'll just use that. And this is 22 gauge. I don't need that long. I do kind of want to keep a good length because I probably want to put these in parallel when the time comes. So there's that. Here's some 18 gauge black. I'm going to solder on this and if it's not completely destroyed I'm going to use it to grow my strawberries. Okay, just going to strip a tiny little bit away from the end here. couple millimeters will do. And now the challenge is to get this hot enough to flow solder. So I'm going to press hard and hope that this thing takes solder and doesn't dissipate enough from the large mass compared to the size of the soldering iron. I can feel the solder sticking. This might actually take a little bit I may have to bump the temperature up, although a good electronics hobbyist will at least tell you that there's a difference between temperature and heat. Yeah, that's just not working. I'm at uh, 350. I'm going to go up a little bit to 425. The tip temperature had dropped just just from being put on here. 
down to like 309. All right, here it goes. Pressing down hard, I'm giving it a minute or so to recover its temperature. It seems like we're achieving a puddle. Yeah, it's not great. Let's try the neutral. Again, pressing hard. You would really need like something like a 100 watt and very large tipped iron to do this properly, I think. Or you can do other techniques like trying to heat up the aluminum substrate. So I'm just going to put some flux pen on here. Now I'm going to pre-tin my wires just to make it a little easier on myself. Okay, I'm gonna put a dab of solder to transfer better. There we go. And I wanna really keep this light. I wanna keep the solder joints small because I'm going to put Kapton tape over this in an attempt to keep it insulated. Okay, put some flux on here. Just make sure there's an abundance of flux on there. Temperature is recovering. So the live, you know what, I'm just gonna use DC colors. I'm gonna heat up the substrate first and then introduce the wire. And that is soldered. Same thing here. Heat up the substrate first and then introduce the wire. There we go. That didn't go so bad. How hot is this? It's pretty hot, but it's not too bad. Now turn off my iron. Maybe I need a foot pedal for my iron. That would be great. Okay. I'm going to strip back a bit of this to make a clean connection into some Wago terminals. Okay. And I mentioned we're going to be checking thermals. And we're going to be doing that using a multimeter and a thermistor, K-type thermocouple. There we go. That's what it is. And, oops, temp is actually over here. And this will be in degrees science. So you guys that pay attention to degrees Frankenstein may have to do some conversion on your own. Could be your extracurriculars. So these, this part here will get crazy hot. So I think I want to encase the thermocouple sorta in there. So here we go. We put that, see if we could put it on top of one of the chips, like so. And it'll be noted that I will not be touching too much when this is active because I have no way, way to secure a ground or an earth connection. And therefore, I don't want to risk touching anything like the multimeter, which could be live. There we go. It could be live because we don't have a grounding connection on the metal substrate here. This thermal couple could become active. You know, I highly doubt it. I, I severely doubt it, but you never know. So I'm going to stuff that over there. If it gets too bright, I will cover it with a piece of paper or something. 
just so that you guys can still read the numbers. I don't remember the wattage of this thing, but I will put it in the description below. Maybe I'll put it on the screen too, who knows. All right, so neutral, our black here, goes onto the neutral connection for the AC voltage. Our live, the AC voltage, will go to the live, which is the red in this case. If you're coming here to find out which colors mean what, you've come to the wrong place. Because as you know, I have just kind of done my best. So right now it, it is 24 degrees C. I can press on this to confirm. Okay, 24, 28 with the heat of my finger. And this is about 79 degrees Frankenstein. Okay, 25 degrees Celsius. I'm going to turn on my unit. So my unit is on right now. And now I can press on my switch and hopefully nothing goes pop. It is definitely lit. It is actually a little too bright. So I will put this over here. So look at that. We've got like a nice sort of purpley color. And this chip is climbing in temperature, 90 degrees C so far, 93, 96, 98, 99, 100 degrees C. It is still climbing. I don't think this is meant to be run without a heatsink. 112 now. I am blinded from pulling that off. 113, 114. Oh. Hearing something give, I think it's the uh, tape. 120C. I think I'm going to pull out. Okay. Uh, something got really hot in there. I don't think that was really meant to survive over 100C. But that's okay. This is why we do this. You never know, you know. <laughs> it was definitely not meant to be run without a heat sink. But I'm wondering if everything survived. If I give it another blast, it should turn on. Oh, I did flip off the... There we go. It still turns on, so I don't know if it's irre irreversibly damaged. But we're going to give this a moment here and let it cool down, and I'll bring you back then. And we're back. So... Let's just keep torture testing this thing. I have done what any sane person would have done and secured this to a computer heatsink. That's pretty secure, so I can show you. See? Ooh, very nice. This is from a AMD, um, I guess it was an Athlon 64 or something like that. I don't know. It was a processor, probably had a TDP of 95 watts. I've probably put in the bottom of the video how many watts this thing is supposed to dissipate. But to be honest, I don't have access to the video until I have edited it. And right now is before that. So I don't know if this will be enough. But we can always give it a shot. So I think we're going to do another torture test. I don't expect this thing to heat up as quickly. Um, maybe it will. Maybe it won't. There's no heatsink compound. No nothing. This is just ready to go. Flipping the switch on. Again, being careful, this um, heatsink could be live at mains voltage because I do not have a ground plugged in because I do not have a place to put it. If this becomes my permanent solution, I will drill and tap these uh, four holes and bolt the LED down, heatsink compound, and use another drill and tapped hole on the heatsink to run at ground. So here it goes. My power supply is on. I will step on the foot pedal now. And I am immediately blinded. Oh, this is not helping very much. There we go. Uh, temperature is rising, but it's not quite climbing as quickly. So even though the heatsink is not directly coupled to it, uh, it is actually, look at that. Seems to be nearly topping out there. I'm going to give it a couple more minutes here to try to build a heat soak the heat sink 
this is it's it's extremely bright though i have to tell you i believe it's out competing my um studio light over on the side there i'd pick it up and shine it downwards but again that heat sink could be live at mains voltage and also that heat sink is probably getting pretty warm so the probe if you don't remember is right on top of one of those load um those load carrier things my god this is so bright yeah it looks like it's touching it's good yeah 60 degrees c i think you know what i think that's that's valid i think this heat sink is doing its job because there's no airflow it's all passive by the way and this thing is probably not helping that but it's all passive cooling it's receiving 64 look at that it dropped a bit i'm gonna put some more sunshades on Jeez, that was bright yeah 63 it looks like it's trending downwards it's actually found its limit at about 65 66 c so that's not actually that heavy of a chunk of aluminum it does have fins but that's that's not that hot 68 mind you i have paper insulating the one side of it and it is sitting on the bench but usually electronics can go up to about 80 90 degrees celsius with zero problems most of them can do 100 without any issues and uh, a lot of them have like melting points in the 120s where they stop working celsius that is so this is not bad at all i think i would be able to run that the paper is barely warm to the touch but this thing is incredibly bright and it had a very uh, high speed or a high heat test run as well so i think i would feel comfortable running that at 70. i might get a slightly bigger heat sink and run it a little bit cooler because uh, the cooler these things go is the longer they'll last typically but leds you know pretty efficient they don't take that long to uh to decide if they're going to stick around or not so that's not bad yeah i feel comfortable I don't know if I feel comfortable walking away from this. 76 degrees Celsius is not too bad. So if I let go of the pedal now, okay, now the voltage is off. Look at that plummet. You can touch this. You know what? This, this heat sink is not even, it's not hot to the touch. So I would say that if this was better thermally coupled to the heatsink, this would be perfectly fine to run on this heatsink with just passive cooling alone. So that's pretty good. You see it's, re it's reached a kind of a saturation point there, 39. That's probably the temperature of the heatsink, to be honest. 38, probably cool it by touching it. Yeah, my finger is cooler, so it's cooling it down. So that's a great test. That means that I can run a couple of these on a large aluminum uh, sort of chunk that I have, and they should stay relatively cool. All I need to do is drill and tap four holes per, and definitely connect a ground. Uh, if I have this anywhere um, where it's gonna be semi-permanently installed, I definitely want this to have a ground, but these do look like viable options. And then if they work to grow plants, then that would be phenomenal. Here in Ontario, we pay about double the rate during the daytime as we do during the night. So having these plants in sort of like my basement work area, I can turn on these, these lights here for eight hours at night and have it off for the rest of the day. And that should produce relatively good crop if they work well. And it should not cost that much electricity because I do believe we're only using whatever I put down here worth of watts. So that's pretty cool. If you want to see anything else done with these guys, aside from setting it up into a little grow room, because that is definitely coming, then let me know in the comments below. But I think that'll be it for these little guys, especially for their price. And I hope to catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.